Hey, oh, what's going on, everybody? It's been a while. Um, don't worry about it. I've just been at work and doing other things for like a month. Don't worry, I'm perfectly fine. And I might actually start being able to make more consistent YouTube videos. So, welcome. I'm actually doing this live on YouTube. So, if you come on and check it out, then you can do that because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, if you want to check me out, just like and subscribe and click on the notification bell so you can figure out when I'm going live because I used to record all my stuff on Twitch and now I'm kind of doing it on YouTube. Whatever. We're doing more deck techs. We're doing a whole bunch of stuff. So come check me out live and maybe I can bring up the uh, cooking ramen and things that I shouldn't next time. I don't know. But today we're talking super friendlies. Like super, super friendlies. We're doing a... We're doing friendly. <laughs> so... We're just making a bunch of planeswalkers. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff. But what commander are we going to be using? Obviously, the planeswalker commander, Commodore Guff. Four mana, five loyalty. Beginning of your end step, put a loyalty counter on another target planeswalker you control. That's pretty nice. It has plus one, add oh, plus one loyalty. Create a one one red wizard creature, Doug, with tap, add red. Spend this mana only to cast planeswalker spell. That's pretty good. Allows you to ramp into more planeswalkers. Uh huh? Minus three, you draw X cards, and this deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of planeswalkers you control. It's a win condition. In other words, we're going to be capitalizing on that, like a lot. We're only running 12 creatures, enchantments, 7 artifacts, 7 instants, 10 sorceries, and 26 planeswalkers. That's a lot of planeswalkers, like a lot, a lot. But our creatures are really, really good, such as Arena Rector. Whenever it dies, you exile it, and if you do, search your library for a Planeswalker card, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle. What are you going to get? I don't know. We haven't gotten the Planeswalkers left yet. Uh, Deep Glow Skate is, when it enters the battlefield, double the number of each kind of counter on any number of target permanents, so it basically doubles the loyalty on each of your Planeswalkers, which is really, really good, especially when Commodore Guff can then just nuke the field, which is really good. Uh, and you can do it multiple times then. So if you drop Commodore Guff and the next turn Deep Glow Skate, you can do that with that minus three, what? Like five times after that? That's a lot. It's a lot of damage. But Golden Forge Thopteryx has each legendary permanent you control has Ward 2, meaning it's really hard for them to kill your Planeswalkers with just normal spells. They have to actually pay a little bit more for it because we want them out. Also, if you ever wondered why I will suddenly just stop, it's because I like to imagine that I'm talking to you guys. So I just stare at a webcam, which I don't use like much anymore. But you guys might see me when I cook ramen and things. But Grateful Apparition uh, deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker. Pro proliferate. It's the same thing as Thrumming Bird, which is right down here. It deals combat damage to a player. You pro proliferate. Which is really great, especially because you're having a lot of Planeswalkers that have a lot of counters on them, meaning proliferating a lot is really, really good. You know what? Let's just go from up, up from there. The Peregrine Dynamo. It has, it's 1-5 with haste and costs 3 mana to get out. You pay 1 and tap this to copy target activated or triggered ability from another legendary source that's not a commander. You may choose new targets for the copy. So, if you wanted to nuke the board with, I don't know, a Chandra or something, you could pay one more mana, tap this, and you could do it again. You copy the ability, which is really, really great. Because, I don't know, the, the big ultimate abilities on Planeswalkers tend to be really, really good. Spark uh, Shaper Visionary. This one is an alternate, alternate win con. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose any number of target planeswalkers you control. At the end of turn, they become 3-3 three, three blue bird creatures with flying, hexproof. Whenever this creature does combat damage to a player, scry one. Which is really, really good. Because you can then swing in and do a bunch of lethal damage with a bunch of planeswalkers. Which is dope. Uh, you also got things like the Silent Arbiter. Because, ha, huh, planeswalkers are fragile. So you need the Silent Arbiter to make it so that they're not so fragile. No more than one uh, creature can attack each combat, and no more than one creature can block each combat, which is pretty good when you can just chump block their creature, and they have to choose which creature they want to attack with. Uh, we have Primacon, Primacon Sky Rampart, a 3 mana 1-5 with Flying and Defender, which is pretty good, and it's Battlefield, choose left or right. Each player can only attack the nearest opponent of the chosen direction, and the Planeswalker is controlled by that opponent, meaning... With Silent Arbiter and Primacon Sky Rampart, 
if somebody's playing a creature deck, you could just say, no, you go that way. I'm going to face against the the little dweeb on the combo deck. Because, <laughs> screw you, you're not going to kill me Planeswalkers with combat damage. It's really good. Uh, Anak Anaki Oathkeeper. This is also pretty good. Because it's like a, a, a ghostly prison, kind of. But for Planeswalkers, they can't attack Planeswalkers. You control this or control it pays one. But where I you could have added a lot of the other ones with that too. This this one also has you pay six and exile this from your graveyard. Return target planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield, which is really, really good. Because people want to get rid of this, but then you could just pay six in the later game to return your big planeswalker from your graveyard to the battlefield, which I think is pretty neat. Uh this Mila Crafty Companion can also flip into a Luca, but you almost never want to. Because whenever an opponent attacks one or more planeswalkers you control, put a loyalty counter on each planeswalker you control. That's really good. And whenever permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, you may draw a card. That's also really good. Like, that this is just really good. So you almost always want to just play this as a creature. Uh, also, Liori, Spark Touched Hunter. It is flying in vigilance, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, choose a planeswalker type. Till end of turn, whenever you activate an ability of a planeswalker of that type, copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copies. This card is broken. Absolutely busted in this. Because you could do a lot of weird shenanigans. Because, I mean, you got some Jaces. You got some Narsets. You got Chandras. Because Chandras awesome. Teferi's. Lord knows you have enough Teferi's. But what if you want to do it on... I don't know, the final ability on like Venser and get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell, exile target permanent. So you get two emblems that have whenever you cast a spell, exile target permanent. Meaning you can just nuke the board every time you cast a spell. It's really, really good. And is that it? Yeah, that's it for the creatures because we only care about creatures. The planeswalkers, there are way too many of them to go one by one. But basically, all the planeswalkers either help you to survive, help you ramp into more Planeswalkers, or they do really good things. So, if you want the list, let me know, because I don't mind sending the list. This is an absolutely hilarious deck to just pull up with, because you're just like, oh, I'm playing Super Friends. But in reality, you're, you're dark and sinister, and you have many, many win cons. I mean, you're playing a thing called Urza Assembles the Titans? Who... Who's seen this card? I certainly didn't until I made this deck. It has read ahead, but the first one is scry four, then you may reveal the top card of your library. If it's a Planeswalker card, then you put it into your hand. Number two is you may put a Planeswalker card with mana value six or less from your hand on the battlefield. And three, you may activate the ability of loyalty, the, you may activate the loyalty abilities of Planeswalkers you control twice this turn rather than once. That's insane, <laughs> especially because if you just start at one, you always start at one because it gets you a good planeswalker and then lets you put it out and then activate abilities twice, which is pretty neat. Uh, Tefiri's talent is just a bogus card. You do minus 12, you get an emblem with you may activate loyalty abilities to planeswalkers you control on any player's turn, anytime you could cast an instant, you could just play on other people's turns because that's a problem with planeswalkers you tend to only be able to do things on your turn now with teferi's talent especially if you throw this on like karn liberated or something because it starts at six and then plus four like two turns later bam you get the emblem it's pretty good it's also got another ability but it's whenever you draw a card put a loyalty counter on your chance to planeswalker like yes that's really good but I kind of forgot to put a lot of card draw on this. That's that's the problem with a lot of my decks. I just find I don't have enough card draw. But then when I make a, a deck that's only about card draw, it's only about card draw, which is still pretty good. But card draw is card draw. A resourceful defense is whenever a permanent you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on target permanent you control. So you can just take all, take all those counters and put them over there. It's someplace else or something. I don't know. You can also pay five and move any number of counters from target permanent you control to another target permanent you control, which is really, really good when you just have like a bunch of things on like your Karn Liberated or something, and you want to throw it on a Teferi or something to give that my full minus, the ultimate. I don't know. This is crazy. It's amazing. Oh, the Teferi uh, flickers, but you may activate the abilities of planeswalkers you control twice each turn rather than once. That's pretty neat for five mana. 
I'll take it. Deification is also mega broken. You pay two, and enters the battlefield, choose a planeswalker type. Planeswalkers you control of the chosen type have hexproof. As long as you control a creature, if damage dealt to a planeswalker you control of the chosen type would result in all loyalty counters on it being removed. Said all but one of those counters are removed, which is really good. Because, like, just put it on, like, your challengers or something that you're probably going to plus anyway. Furies. The Furies are just good standalone cards. So, you do that. And then, bam, they can't kill your planeswalker, which makes it even better. When you cast Commodore Guff multiple times, and you do a minus three, and they nuke the board, because you already have so many of them, because they can't kill them, because they haven't got rid of the deification. Because, yeah. You also got some basic removal, and some basic protection, like Furious Protection, Sword to Plowshare, Path to Exile. Uh, the, the Guff rewrites history is really funny. It's like a big chaos warp, but different. Uh, Experimental Augur, also card draw. Top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. Proliferate. That's pretty neat. Especially because proliferation is good. Proliferation is good. A repeat of reverberation is just reverberate, but you do it twice on your planeswalker ability. Which is pretty neat. Especially when you do a full minus. Uh, ignite the beacon. Also, search your library for two planeswalkers cards. Reveal them. Put them in your hand. The shuffle. Whoa. You do like turn five that into turn four. I don't know. Fury, temporal arc mage. I don't know why, but sure. And then you could do, I don't know, Chandra Legacy of Fire. I forget what these cards do because, yeah. Uh, I mean, sorceries are just a lot of, you know, big removal spells like Blasphemous Act, uh, the, the, the Supreme Verdict, Triumphant Reckoning. No, uh, Urza's Ruinous Blast, Vanquish the Horde, Wrath of God. But you're not playing many creatures anyway. Why do you care if your creatures die? You can just get them back somehow. Just one way or another. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you. Uh, Triumphant Reckoning uh, returns all plan uh, artifact enchantments and Planeswalker cards from the from your graveyard to the battlefield. <gasps> Pog! It's reanimation, but for Planeswalkers. That's insane. Also, Search for Glory is like the only tutor in this. Because you don't want it to seem too powerful, so you could say that this deck is a 7. But you can search your library for Snow Permanent, a Legendary card, or a Saga. Reveal it, put it in your hand. Let's shuffle. You may, you gain one life for each snow mana spent to cast the spell. Which is not a lot. But it's okay. Because we love it either way. To play the Gatewatch is look at the top seven cards of your library. Put two Planeswalker cards from among them on the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. Um, if you don't hit two, I want to say skill issue, but pff, whatever. Uh, call the Gatewatch. Because it's another tutor. But you still have to play the Planeswalker. You still have to get it to max loyalty. You still have to do a whole bunch of other stuff. So either way, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So Ascend from Avernus is also another. Return all creatures and Planeswalker cards with mana value X or less from the graveyard of the battlefield. Exile this. That's pretty neat. That's that's like pretty neat. Because see, you're getting your Planeswalkers back. Because planeswalkers are fragile, we know this. Uh, artifacts, just basic ramp stuff, talismans, staff of completion also allows you to proliferate too. If you pay three life, that's pretty nice. The solar ring, arcane signet, but Icar Moon Gauntlet, mmm, mmm, zero to proliferate. Ooh, have any of the planeswalkers that you're just like, eh, it's not really doing much right now. Just proliferate. You give all your other planeswalkers a chance. And minus twelve, take an extra turn after this one. Heck yeah. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, choose a counter or a target permanent. Put an additional counter of that kind on that permanent. Neat. So whenever you cast any of these other spells or a pl Planeswalker, you can just kind of say, hey, I get another loyalty. But yeah, so uh, the, the lands are just lands because lands. Yay! But yeah, like I said, Planeswalkers are Planeswalkers. They do good things. There's a lot of Planeswalkers. There's a lot of fun ones, and there's a lot of not fun ones. Yes, I'm playing Tavari Time Raveler because it's a good card. Uh, da, 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 da. So yeah, if you guys like the deck, let me let me know, and I can give you the deck list. It's a mana value, uh, mana curve of 3.53, which because there's nine cost, e. But I think you get discounted to like three mana. It's pretty good. This is the color distribution because apparently people like to see that. But look at these subtypes. There's so few creatures. But yeah. So many planeswalkers. So many planeswalkers, you're going to play them every single time. 
every time you want to. You play Planeswalker, and Planeswalkers are friends. So therefore, you're playing super friends. So, if you guys liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next deck tech. tech.